All right, welcome to another episode of Can You Survive This Podcast. My guest today is Justin Franson. His book is Athleticism, Whole Body Plus Whole Brain Performance. Justin, welcome to the podcast. Jeff, thanks for having me on. Yeah, for sure. So why don't we jump right in? Um, whole body, whole brain performance, that's like right up my alley. So um, what kind of drew you into writing the book? And can you tell me a little bit about that process? Yeah, definitely. So I'm an athleticism performance coach. I started athleticism.com almost three decades ago, working with amateur and professional athletes. And I do nerve work, fascia work. I treat concussions, do all coordination for sports performance. And, and so that book is primarily focused in that genre of just human optimization kind of what your lane is as well and we work with professional athletes and most major sports and and uh what what got me to where we are today is over a decade ago i saw one of our athletes wearing a smartwatch and uh he comes in and said justin i have pain in my wrist right where my smartwatch is located and i i said hey take that radiation off your wrist and sure enough, he takes the radiation off and the pain goes away. And so that led me kind of into this space that I'm in more so now is really getting products out there to help people deal with electromagnetic radiation and, and the, yeah, the stressors and the invisible stressors in our environment of that radiation. So for anyone listening who does not know, what is EMF radiation? EMF radiation is our electromagnetic fields or frequencies. They can be native ones or non-native. And every living organism being has a resonance and our energy field goes out about six to eight feet. And, and they're, the framework of that resonance is unpolarized waves. We call them scalar waves. Mm -hmm. So they distribute equally in every direction. So my biofield, my energy field doesn't go straight line out of my right ear. Now it's a resonance that goes equally in every direction. That's the same as the universe's unpolarized waveforms that we're one with. Really? They're all scalar waves, unpolarized, like the resonance of the earth. When you're earthing or grounding outside, you're barefoot. You're not in it in one spot and then out of it in another. No, it's a resonance across the whole earth. So one other example of that waveform like an unpolarized one would be if i drop a pebble into a pond the splash of the pond goes in a circular direction and equally in every direction it doesn't go in a straight line so the reason is is because of the framework of how we're one with nature through these scalar waves so those are all electromagnetic fields because every living organism and our and our entire environment uh, you know natural environment is all electromagnetic fields. Now, to the contrary, all man-made electricity, wireless signals, it's all one directional waveform where it doesn't work. So that's the difference there. It's either unpolarized or one directional, and we don't do so well with one directional waveforms that are 10 zeros faster than us. Do you have any idea why that is? Why why does our body accept the kind of uh, even wave and dislike the straight line version? Because we're one with nature. I mean, we're literally designed to be in that resonance. And that's the physics component of it. It is what's so beautiful about how we're designed is that we're essentially a body battery or a capacitor and we, we emit a resonance and we absorb frequencies as well. And we're like a sponge. <laughs> and and uh, so there's a certain bandwidth that we rev really well with. So when you introduce something that's foreign and different and manufactured, it's going to first chip away at our biofield, as Bruce Lipton will say, because your chi is indicative of your health. So that directly affects the chemistry of your body because you can't have chemistry without the energy. So, mm. uh, so if there's an environmental stressor, Jeff, that's chipping away at your biofield and making you weaker, 
it's going to affect the chemistry of your body. So what is an example of an environmental stressor? Well, there's a lot. Uh, I mean, you go from uh, chemtrails in the air with barium, strontium, aluminum being dropped. You go through all the herbicides and pesticides of glyphosate in our food, manufacturing food, fake food, the red dyes, all, all the preservatives and additives, anything that's you know industrialized in, in that way, plastics, chemical stuff. There's, there's so many types of toxins that are out there, uh, but probably I would argue with Zach Bush, he's a friend of mine, but he, I would say, hey, look, he'll say we have over 40 years of proof that glyphosate is, is a cause, a big cause of cancer and one, probably one of the biggest environmental stressors because glyphosate is that uh, patented as an antibiotic. It's an herbicide pesticide that you know, these food companies are dipping seeds in it and then overspraying it. There's 10 times the amount of glyphosate in all of the food from when we were younger. And it's just devastating to the population. So, uh, but I'll look at them and go, well, we have 140 years of electricity being into our environment. And ever since electricity was introduced into our environment, and we start living in these homes that are actually now electrical boxes, everything on the bar graph from cancer, suicide, diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, cardiovascular and infertility have all increased at record levels. There were no six, or six cases of diabetes across the entire world 140 years ago. Really? And so you suspect it's related to kind of like denaturing ourselves and kind of like removing ourselves from nature and going into this sort of buzzing box of electricity? Exactly. That's, well said. That's interesting. Uh, is there any idea like how is electricity and diabetes related? Because what happens is that is there's a voltage-gated calcium channel breakdown, so it messes with my, mitochondria, messes with your endocrine system. It disrupts your cortisol levels, which directly affect the glucose levels. So we had a client that knew childhood diabetes. Mom's wearing a smartwatch. Kids wearing a smartwatch. It's ironic because that's what caused it in the first place. They jump on an airplane and fly to Fiji from Orange County, and it's a long flight. The first leg, when everyone turns on their Wi-Fi, kids sitting right next to the mom, not eating anything, gets a bloody nose and his glucose spikes 200 points when everyone turns on their Wi-Fi. Whoa. So we know there's an environmental stressor. And then three-fourths of the flight, half the people are still sleeping. The other half wake up, turn on their you know Wi-Fi and start using their devices kid's still sleeping, he gets a bloody nose while he's sleeping and his glucose spikes up a hundred points. It, it, it's all environmental. We have, we have, there's an internal environment and an external environment. And for some reason, Jeff, there's a disconnect between us and our external environment unless we can see it or smell it. And so you're not supposed to see air unless, you know, you might be in LA, in LA. <laughs> where I grew up and it's polluted. Uh, you know, you can see, you can smell it sometimes in industrial areas, uh, but that's not normal. You're not supposed to see that. So there's a disconnect of us create uh, equating uh, wireless signals and wireless radiation to an environmental stressors. And the way I can articulate it or quantify it is through meters. You can buy wireless meters to meter the stressors. But then the other way is I want to share the speeds of the wavelengths and how different they are than how we are. You know, you mentioned the wavelengths. I'm very curious for you to share more about that. I heard that, and this is going to get like drifting into like YouTube warning label territory, but I heard that the, uh, the 5G emits like a pulsing wave. And because it's a pulse, it our uh, our body or our system has a tough time acclimating to it. Um, is there any? Am I onto something there? Or was my friend crazy? Or what? What do you? What's the deal with five G? Some people say it's dangerous. Some people say it's a conspiracy theory to think it's dangerous. And what's your take on all that? Well, 
whoever says it's conspiracy dangerous, I would love to have a conversation with them <laughs> or yeah. not conspiracy dangerous, excuse me. So if they say it's good for you, those are the guys I want to talk to because they have no clue what they're talking about. Just I, I've heard not down. that it's not that it's good for you more so just that it's it's not harmful and it's totally fine and you could park your bed next to a tower and you'll be fine. Now, I wouldn't sleep next to a tower, but um what do you what do you say to the people who say it's totally safe and if, if you think it's unsafe then you're going to get demonetized on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it it's simple physics and when we start to understand and this is a conversation I'd have with them too after I shake them a few times, but the basically we're one with nature. And so let's go over our brainwave states when we're awake and asleep and performing. Uh, let's just start there and, and let's convert those waves, the speed of those wavelengths into a wave per second. So everyone can grasp this concept. When we're in a delta and theta brainwave state, that's when you're sleeping, you have distorted sleep, your REM rapid eye movements, you're getting lucid dreams, our brainwave states are about one or below one to eight hertz or waves per second, right? Okay. When we're in an alpha brainwave state, that's when my athletes for athleticism are in the flow. They're in the zone. They can't miss. That's nine to 13 hertz or waves per second. Nine. So does that mean it's fat? It's a, it's a faster up and down? So... That's nine waves, you know, a speed of the wavelengths are in, in one second. Got There's it. nine of those in one second when Got someone's it. in the zone. Okay. There's one to eight when they're sleeping. Okay. Got so it. So it gets a little faster as you get more awake. Mm hmm Okay. Right? So now let's go and look at the earth the Schumann resonance, the healing pulse of the earth. That is known to be 7.83 Hertz or waves per second, 7.83. So it's right where we're sleeping and right below where we're optimizing our performance. It's a very low and slow speed of a waveform. So we're essentially one with it. That feeds us. That Schumann resonance feeds our electron transport chain, what gives us energy, and gives us that negative ionic charge. It charges our body battery. It's one of the five ways we get charged outside. We also okay. get it from the sun. We get it from the air. We get it from the food and water and the conductivity from the water. So now let's go over these cell phones. Now, the minimum cell phone right now, the 4G bandwidth is 2.45 gigahertz. So when you say the word gigahertz, that just means billion waves per second. That's what that means. When you say megahertz, that's millions of waves per second. So you'll learn these terms, but the gigahertz, 2.45 billion waves per second, 2.45 gigahertz, that is the lowest number that starts to destructure water in our body. What, what does that mean, destructure water? So our but water has structure, it has formation, and that's that honeycomb, like Fibonacci like molecule. sequence that our bodies accept it. So that's why the COVID shot was so successful about hurting a lot of people is because it shaped it in a honeycomb shape and it tricked a lot of people's body into grabbing onto it. So our body naturally grabs onto water that has a structure to it. If it's destructured and it's splattered all over and there's no formation to it, our body doesn't know how to process it. So it doesn't utilize it. So that's why it's best to drink live spring water versus yeah. something I, that's, you know, I, been I've seen processed. like, uh, it's kind of similar to like, uh, like you get a, a water bowl for your dog, but it like moves the water. So it's like more natural. So it's kind of like a little spinning cyclone of water. Yeah, that'll structure it. Anything that'll go in a spiral sequence will structure it, structure it. Got you. Got you. So, so that you're, you're just talking about like the molecular, like honeycomb, it needs right. to be organized in a certain way so that our body can work with it. Otherwise it's, it's not going to work. Exactly. So 
That 2.45 gigahertz destructures water in our bodies, in our environment, uh, and that is the lowest bandwidth. So now we go into the 5G spectrum. So the 5G spectrum, the speed of those wavelengths is, guess what? 60 to 90 gigahertz. So that's 60 to 90 billion waves per second when we sleep rev and optimize at one or below one to like 13 waves per second. Like like 13, not 13 billion, like not one, 13. three. Yeah. And yeah. so so the 5G is billions of times more ten than what our- 10 zeros body. more, 10 yeah. zeros. You got 10, 10 zeros to someone's bank account. Is that a big difference, Jeff? Uh, that's a pretty good day. That's That's a good year. That's a good rest of your life <laughs> if you play it right. <laughs> exactly. So- that type of a speed of a waveform would impact someone's body equally the same. It, it, it's, but it's devastating for us. So now we'll get into where does telecom allowed to go? They're allowed to go up to 300 gigahertz. They're allowed to go over three times the highest level of what 5G is allowed to be at. That's Ooh. crazy. And we're not even at the highest level of 5G yet. Who is so they're the, going to keep notching this stuff up. Now, 5G has multiple bandwidths in it, and they have different specs. So the pulsing, yeah, that's really challenging for a body. You see more of the pulsing in a smart meter, per se, every 7 to 15 seconds. In the 5G, there's just multiple bandwidths. So we, we our bodies can't get any organization from it because we're getting hit by... <laughs> you're getting the grenades, and you're getting... <laughs> you know, run over and then you're getting the, the, you know, the, the machine guns all at one time. <laughs> so, so you're just getting blasted all at once. So who is the arbiter that decides what the highest um, gigahertz you're allowed to go to is? It's the best health organization in the world. It's called our government and the oh, FCC. Yeah. They're and, really good. Which I know they isn't can't... really a health organization, but they think they are. It's FCC is a communication commission. They don't care about your health, but they're the ones that have lobbied for this bandwidth. And they're the ones that are in full control of what speed of, of these signals are rolled out and at what proximity they're rolled out in, in our in our space and in our environment. And that's why you see a lot of people getting sick next to cell towers. That's why you see a lot of people, sick people not being able to get well is because it's really tough to heal when you're decharged. You lose your polarity, Jeff. It's tough to heal. We got to get out into nature and allow nature's resonance to recharge us or you're, you're setting yourself up for failure because mold, microtoxins, parasites, fungus, Lyme, they're all charged by EMFs. You give a non-native waveform, you know, you give those frequencies to those challenges and it's just like adding fuel to a fire you know if there's one thing i know it's that the government cares a lot about my health uh, <laughs> me personally so that's know, why they want to give you everything right everything's free they just want to give you it because they're going to make you sicker and make make you sicker quicker and get you looped into this whole system uh feeding you as drugs is health and that's not health drugs are not health a vaccine is not health uh, not smiling and, and hiding your face is not health. You know, it, it, it's the, the antithesis of what health is. Health is being outside in nature, loving, touching, being with people, smiling, uh, being together, Connection. praying, connecting to God, getting grounded by nature, eating clean food, real food, uh, drinking clean water. Uh, that's being happy and smiling. Like that's what health is. It, it's not what they're selling as health. 100%. Very, very well said, uh, uh, connection. So let's say I got a router in my house, which obviously I do. Now tell me like maybe one step I could take, like when I go to sleep, would it help me to unplug the router while I'm sleeping? Does that oh, help? Yeah. It does help. Definitely. So yeah, Jeff, there's, so what we do is we want to understand what the stressors are first. So let's identify them. Well, all the electricity in our homes is challenging. So we should ground that out, do the best to make it a healthier home. 
And then you have, you know, the different stressors, like you don't want to have your head of the bed on the other side of a refrigerator because there's a magnetic resonance out there. You don't want to have your head of the bed on the other side of a smart meter because there's that sporadic, you know, cell tower of a smart meter right outside your bedroom wall. So we want to understand where the stressors are. You can get meters to meter them uh, and identify them. And the sounds the meters make are the noise pollution that our bodies hear and our nervous system hears that most humans can't hear that you, and you can hear those band waves really bandwidths really well under water. Uh, mm -hmm. But anyhow, identify the stressors and develop proximity protocols and usage protocols with it. So no more laptops over your reproductive organs, everybody. Probably one of the most evil marketing schemes of all time is to create a battery and a router and call it a laptop and put it over people's reproductive organs. Women's ovaries absorb 10 times the amount of radiation than any other part of the body. Guys, sperm counts plummet. This is absolutely devastating for population replenishment. So the earbuds, the wireless earbuds, there's an, essentially an airway canal directly to your inner ear. You don't want to have those in your inner ear. Uh, I, I mean, stop driving electric cars, stop sitting on massive batteries. Massive batteries sitting on it, that's dirty electricity because it's giving you the usage of electricity you're, you're requesting. And that'll cause 18% lower testosterone for guys and girls driving mm. electric cars. Whoa. So you say no to driving an electric car. I say no way. It's the single biggest, worst, closest thing that you could do for everybody. Really? So sitting on a big giant battery, not good. Not good. How about sticking... Well, if you had a friend and they had a kid and they had a fork, a metal fork in their hand, they were about to stick it into an outlet, would you want them to get electrocuted? No. Okay. Why, why, why is getting electrocuted so bad for you? It will damage your body. Because it's going to zap the crap out of you. <laughs> well said. Right? Like literally, and this is the same thing. Everybody, electricity is not good for us. It never has been. Just because it's in a fancy car doesn't mean it's good for us. When you store it in a battery and it's giving you the level of electricity you're requesting, whether you're accelerating, decelerating, idling, reversing, going from zero to 80 or 80 to 90, like what? I mean, the levels of toxicity that that thing is emitting is absolutely massive to cause 18% lower testosterone in healthy people driving that car. It's the single last thing everyone should go to. The whole electric car fad is just that. You have to use more electricity to use the vehicle. They're wanting to reduce the usage of electricity, but then they're saying, hey, buy electric cars and use more of it. It just, there's no common sense just right out of the gates for it. The, the infrastructure will never be there. The mining extraction process using coal, cadmium, precious minerals is dirtiest ever. They just do it in other countries so we don't see it. Literally, you're having a fire hazard. It's heavy. It's tearing up the, the roads. It doesn't get more fuel efficient when you're driving. They can shut you down at any time. When you charge it, it throws off all the electricity in the home. So, <clears throat> excuse me, you take a healthy home, it blows out your entire home. Like mm -hmm. just right when you're charging your car in your home, if you have the batteries in your house, I, I mean, this is just, it, it is the worst invention ever for the health of our planet and us. Wow. That, you and know, you're leaving acid with dead batteries filling up, you know, these are our, our mines are, our, our, you know, landfills with, well, acid that's what with I, dead batteries. That's what I was going to ask about. I've, I never thought about the effect on humans until this conversation actually, but I've always long wondered about where, where are we putting all these old batteries? Where are we decommissioning these things? Cause I know even gasoline cars have big graveyards full of old car shells just rotting away. So what do you do with a huge, massive battery? And I'm fairly certain there is no plan. I'm fairly certain the plan is just put it somewhere where we don't see it and it's not in front of our face and then move on until it's a big problem. Do you have right. any information on that or any opinions on like the, the effect uh, that it's going to have on the environment? Well, I mean, the amount of cars, electric cars that they're rolling out now, it's going to be devastating. They're 
they're they're trying to figure out how to recycle them but i i just i don't think that they can at this point in time to the level that they think they can and we're just setting ourselves up for just a huge failure i i mean i'm all about you know making what you can and and i i i, I love our capitalist society but not at all cost people there there's not at the cost of our environment, not the cost of our health ever. And we got to relook at what health is and, and how to really go about doing things the right way. I mean, the oil and gas, their extraction process is dirty too. They, they haven't done a good enough job to clean it up and they're just cutting corners financially. They can make it so much cleaner. So we should just start there and press them to clean up their act and, and not make as much money, but just clean up their act. We have a really good fuel system that is pretty much endless. I, so, I mean, and then hydrogen's coming from Japan's throwing out some hydrogen cars that might be even better, but we gotta, we gotta just do things without uh, at all cost mentality. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. While we're on the electric car topic, and you did mention this and, uh, warning to the audience i'll drift a little into conspiracy land but i'm hesitant on you know they're trying to make everyone get a get an electric car and after 2020 i'm like that's because you want to control people you want to turn people's cars off don't you and then like a couple of years ago there was a thing saying like all new cars have to have a shut off feature even if it's not an electric car it has to have a shut off feature for drunk driving reasons and i'm like i don't drink like, uh, do you need a turn? I don't drink. So like, I, can I still go wherever I want or are you going to shut me down? That's just my, I'm just letting my mind kind of unroll a little bit, but I think it's about control. I think if you have a computer car, then a computer can be controlled from anywhere and you can be tracked from anywhere as well. If you have a computer car, anyone can see where that car has been anyone that can get into the internet and figure out how to connect to that. So that's just my two cents on that topic. hundred percent agree. You're spot on. And they already are shutting cars down. They don't pay your bill. They shut you down. You can't drive it. They lock you in. You can't get out. People have been locked down in their car and they don't know the override directions. And yeah, you know, it could be could kill people. Like these things are, there's so many bad elements about this whole electric car fad that, they got to go away. The whole industry is moving to hybrids anyways, because no one wants to spend an hour to an hour and 45 minutes charging their car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they just yeah. don't. So, you know, people are figuring that out. Like it's really easy to go to a gas station, take a few minutes, you know, fill up your tank and then you're on you know, yep. for next week or two. So I, this is this whole, th the whole thing has just got to go away and people have to wake up and stop buying uh, and stop allowing them to sell you on your pocketbook. So yeah, we were car shopping. They're offering you know, $50,000 cars you know, for $30,000 if you buy it a, the $30,000 electric car. So you can mm -hmm. save $20,000. So uh, you know, it, not a lot of people can afford not to do that. So they're just doing it. But all I can say is that money that you're spending or saving on purchasing that electric car you're going to spend within the next five years on your health to recapture it because wow. you're going to cook yourself and your family. And you're going to spend that like in a quick minute, everyone driving electric cars after 10 years is going to get some form of major health challenge. Wow. Well, I'm, I'm, we'll have to see how that goes. I hope that, uh, you know, I hope everyone will be okay, but I also yeah. hope everyone will uh, start to move towards a more holistic health approach um, so we talked about unplugging the router. Is there anything else people can do? Cause we were talking about EMF a lot. What other steps can people take? Like you mentioned smartwatches, don't wear them, unplug your router, but like, are there, aren't there devices you can bring in, into your home that will kind of bubble you? Or am I completely making that up? Like they'll kind of like, uh, block EMF radiation or how, how can people that are listening to this, what's the positive? How can they take care of themselves and help themselves? Yeah, definitely. So the cool thing about this whole topic is, is yeah, there's a lot to really be aware of because it, it's, it's a huge stressor. It's the number one biggest stressor. And we just keep adding more into our environment and adding more and adding more. And that's not good for us 
or you know our family so but the cool thing about physics is we can convert a one directional waveform into something that's unpolarized something that our bodies accept and that's what nature does the best so that's where i got into this whole space cuz everyone looks to nature to get grounded right jeff yeah yeah and so well, did should. i yeah they so should. we uh we hand mine crystals so the leading natural emf protection product is called a grounding bag and it's emfrocks.com grounding bag it consists of inside the bag are hand mined crystals so you're going this is a, just a bag of rocks well yeah it is but these rocks have moisture in them we have to keep them hot sealed to preserve the moisture and we sell them in and uh, this is this is the end product you put this grounding bag on your bed it'll create a coherence in your environment and you'll sleep up to 60 percent deeper depending on how disruptive your sleep is wow so there is ways to protect it there are times you said blocking there are times to use blocking products but the end game is not to like hide in a tent in faraday tent like mercola wants you to do I love his book, EMF, but his answers are not the right thing to do. If I brought home a, a tent and said, hey, honey, we're sleeping in this tent, she would say, no, you are. You're outside with a dog and, and the coyotes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not sleeping in a tent and in our, in our house. So there, there's, there's ways to use blocking stuff. You can use blocking paint or tint if there's a stressor coming in directly on one wall or blocking curtains, EMF blocking curtains, but uh, you can use our Faraday bags at certain points. So if you have a router here and and your head's on this side of the router, put the Faraday bag against it and repel the signals the opposite direction. So there's times to repel and direct things the other way, but the net net of it is, is these fields aren't going away unless we shut them off, but even we shut them off, we're still getting zapped from our neighbors. You can still pick up 50 signals from neighboring people all around you. So we got to create a coherence in our environment. And the only one that does the best is nature. And we found the strongest crystals with moisture in them that are different and stronger than shungite or amethyst or black tourmaline. And they're sold through doctor clinics all around the country. And they flat out work. You'll sleep better. Your energy field will be recalibrated up to 91%. So anything that's affecting you, they'll treat it up to 91% passively. That's how powerful nature's resonance is when you bring her into your environment. Wow. Do you sleep one with on, one on your bed? Do you have one on your bed? Uh, not just one. I have a bunch. <laughs> Do you? Yeah. Oh yeah. So my, my wife was going through early menopause and this is where I found out about it. There's a doctor using these products, Jeff, and and he came to me, he's like, what are you doing? And because I was selling another product at that time and just kind of learning the space. And I was looking for my own. And uh, and he said, well, he, I said, well, I'm using these. And I was using crystals, but they had copper in it too. And, and I said, well, what are you using? He goes, I'm using these crystals. And so I went to him, paid, got treated, brought him home. My wife was going through menopause. She hadn't slept for three months. Her cycle stopped. She would wake up every night sweating. And the, the night we brought everything in, she slept through the night and no more sweats. And then her cycle returned really soon after. Wow. That's amazing. That's crazy. So that, that's Jeff. That was when I knew we had something really special. Yeah. That's amazing. I, I, I'd love to try a, a grounding bag. Yeah. We'll send you one. Yeah, that'd be great. And uh, yeah, for the listeners too, I recommend walking barefoot on the earth as much as you can. Yeah. Um, there's been studies on that that show like um, if you have like in inflammation or pain in the legs, 15 minutes of standing on the earth barefoot can actually begin to decrease, decrease that pain. Yeah, that's Clint Ober's work. And he does some great stuff with his book as well, Earthing. And uh, but again, I don't, I'm not a fan of his products because you have to plug in, he has uh, grounding mats, mm -hmm. their sheets and stuff. You have to plug into the electrical outlet at the ground of the outlet, but electricity doesn't travel inside of wires. So if you're touching that outlet, you're 
I, I can I can walk up with a meter and measure a, a milligauss meter and measure electricity, you know, several feet away from that outlet. So wow. if you got something plugged into it, yeah, it might be pulling electrons, but there's still so much other stuff going on. I'm just not a fan of those products. So nothing does it better than nature. There's nothing. Why would you want to plug into a grid to ground something? It just doesn't make sense intuitively to me. So our grounding bags are the, the answer for sleep EMF protection. We have mini grounding bags for a purse pocket or backpack that you carry with you and, and you take, take it with you for on the go protection. Five of these grounding bags will clear 2000 square feet of your home. Seven, if you have solar and solar is the other big topic, Jeff is, man, if you have solar on your home, that's again, that storing the electricity in that massive battery is going to cause a vibration, which is going to cause dirty electricity in your home. Just the same as an electric car. It's the dirty electricity that just is that sporadic pulse and, and, and static in the line. That's a really disruptive level that causes lots of chaos in our body. So homes with solar on it, you're going to see the highest levels of dirty electricity. So we require seven grounding bags for solar. And if you want to keep driving your Tesla because you're obsessed with it, whatever, I would say not to be. Uh, but to clear that, we were, were testing seven grounding bags in, in the Tesla. Oh, wow. I find it very interesting how you, when I said, how do we block this? You, your answer was very fascinating to me that it's not necessarily about blocking it. Um, and I'm just going to throw the word transmutation out there. It's more about transmuting it from a, a, a straight wave to a round, uh, coherent wave. Right. So that's interesting. In, yeah. In layman's terms, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, I'm really excited to try the grounding bag. <laughs> um, you know, I feel like there's so much more we could cover. Or maybe we save it for another podcast or something. Cause I know you do cover a lot of holistic wellness and we were talking about EMF and how like I'm plugging your Wi-Fi at night and how it can affect sleep and how your sleep will improve with the grounding bag. Um, have you done a lot of studying or research regarding sleep and, and how to sort of optimize performance in that regard? Yeah. So the sleep's probably one of the biggest things and that's where we found out about it. Cause when your sleep's disrupt disrupted, you're not going to be able to heal really well. And you, what happens is our brain goes into a twilight sleep with a, with a Wi-Fi on. So it de defaults to, to seeing what's, what's pinging it in the billions of ways per second. So you don't get into those deep restorative sleeps when you have that stressor in your environment. So the grounding bags will create that coherence so you can still get in the deeper sleep. So the Dr. Rodney White did a, a sleep test for three months and his sleep was really disrupted from EMF. He hadn't found any products that had helped. And so he tested ours and the grounding bags got him into 60% deeper sleep for three months. Oh, wow. That's which I mean, is huge. I was going to say, if you get 60% deeper sleep, you, I would like to interview that guy. I bet he felt amazing. Like yeah. in his, in his waking life, he must've felt spectacular. It, it's just a different world when you get sleep and you accumulate that over time. So sleep's one of the most important things. And that's why we, we pretty much call them the deep sleep grounding bags because the grounding bags, like you just allow you to get into sleep. And that's where everyone can test. You can get, have your own smartwatch, which I don't recommend, but if you test it for a few nights, well, that's fine. See where you're at, test it. And then now, you know, but I always like to, uh, you know, let people just see how they feel in the morning. Like that's your biggest litmus test is stop having the meta universe tell you how you felt, feel or sleep or how many steps you took or when it's time to eat. <laughs> no, you got to know yourself, connect to God, get grounded and just know. I, I mean, I, working with professional athletes for almost 30 years, we don't test them every day. So why would you test yourself every day? So we do maybe a baseline, a midpoint, an endpoint test, and that's it. So uh, got to really understand this whole system of how to use technology and not allow it to use you. Speaking of smartwatches, you mentioned like don't wear them and they're not good. 
what if someone has a partner who wears one in bed? Like I don't wear it, but my partner does. It's the same thing, whether it's a, a little, uh, the ring, uh, you know, deal or, uh, your, your partner's wearing radiation on a wrist. That's all those devices have five signals coming out of them. They have Bluetooth, wireless, cellular, broadband spectrum, which all the apps that are on that device, they're tracking your steps, your gait, your, how fast you drive, everything. They know everything about you. And then GPS. So you have five different types of signals that are all minimum 2.45 gigahertz times five on every device. So if, if she's sleeping with a router essentially and five, four others right next to her head and you're two feet away, you know, or if she throws her hand on you and it's on you, like it's not a recipe for health or success. Yeah. Uh, radiation aside, sometimes it just wakes me up because it'll just, I don't know if like a notification comes or something, but sometimes it, it illuminates itself and I'm uh. like, like, and that's, that's <laughs> the other part, Jeff, is the coherence in our environment. It's also the circadian rhythm part where the lighting is so huge. So what you got to black out your room, you got to turn off all the electricity in your room. You got to get into the rhythm of nature. So when it's dark outside, your whole home should be dark. You can't have it like lit up like a football field. Like it's not that's not going to allow you to get into deeper, quicker sleep when you're ready to go to bed. Wear blue light blockers if you have screen time, hardwire. Uh, we turn all of our electricity off at night in the bedroom. So there's a timer on the electrical panel. Like on the breaker. On the breaker, there's a timer on the electrical outlet for the Wi-Fi router. If you have Wi-Fi or if you hardwire, it's even better. But those are two different timers you, you should have that, that make sure that stuff, you want to get the resonance of your home as low and as slow and as close to mimicking being outside into nature. And the way to do that is by turning off all the devices, put your phones on airplane mode, then off, charge them outside of the room. If they have to take a call, throw them inside of a Faraday bag, your phone will still ring inside of our emfrocks.com Faraday bag. Uh, now, the phones, when I first made the Faraday bags, they didn't ring. Now they do. I mean, this this whole industry, they keep turning stuff up. It, it, it's just, it's unbelievable how good their marketing is and how much money they're throwing out at, at it uh, to basically brainwash us into thinking that, you know, it's some security blanket, which it's not. Yeah, and we're definitely addicted to the technology. I mean, it's like, I, so many people these days probably couldn't imagine taking a trip without their GPS on their phone. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, th there's no more Thomas brothers map books. I used to drive around <laughs> LA going and figuring out a Thomas brothers guide. You know, we don't do that anymore. And we, it's definitely makes life a lot easier in a lot of ways, but I want to get older cars. I don't want to have all the EMFs. I don't want to have it shut down on me. I want to be able to, drive when I want to drive, where I want to drive, not have 15 minute cities and not be controlled and tracked and traced like China. And I, I, you know, I, I know that health relies on me being out into nature and not having all these things watching us and, and telling us what to do. Yeah. So you had mentioned the 7.83 um, resonance of the earth. And when you were, I found that really interesting. I just wanted to circle back to it because I've been told um, that like the best spot you want to be if you're me doing meditation is right in between like a sleep and awake. Like you're alert, but you're kind of close to that like dream state. Yeah. And it sounded like the 7.83 is kind of right in that window where yeah, you're it's like, a theta brain waking. State. Yeah. yeah, it's like kind of waking, but like, uh, you're not asleep, but you're not like, you're kind of in between a little bit, but you're still alert. Right. That's a theta brainwave state. So I think uh, Einstein used to hold something and, and, and when he would fall asleep, his hand would go loose and he would drop it and it would wake him up. He would want to 
try to find that brainwave state. And so he would do that to get there. And then he could be really creative and stay in it because he didn't know you could do breath work uh, to get there on his own. So that's how he ended up doing it. But that is, that's where all the creating and, and we can kind of biohack the, this whole time warp that we're in. You know, and, and our body doesn't know the difference between memory, reality, and imagination, or in other words, it doesn't know the difference between past, present, and future. So mm -hmm. if we can trick our bodies into thinking that we're already there and then replicate it, evoke an emotion to it, see it, feel it, taste it, we can create our future. And that's a, that's a lot of what these high performers do to you know perform at those levels. And then the other part is you want to train in those environments. So our whole athleticism, you know, program is all about getting people in the alpha brainwave state, you know, to st get in the flow state. And that that's a, the flow state is an infinite signal. It's a figure eight. So it's oh, an really? infinite flow with the universe. So when you're really revving with those brainwave states and those frequencies that the earth revs at, you're going to be having more optimal performance and, and less errors. So, um, I'm curious if you could share a little bit how you like, how you train your athlete's mind. Um, and I'll just mention I've had a couple of guests on recently who do neurofeedback brain training. And I don't know if you've heard of it, but I'm I'm actually considering trying it where they send you uh, things to attach to your head. Yeah. And then there's different um, training protocols. I don't know them yet because I haven't tried it, but basically they train you, they they view using the machine like where your brain waves are at. And then once you learn how to move your brain waves into theta or whatever you're trying to achieve, then it kind of gives you like a reward signal so that you can train yourself to keep remaining in that, uh, you know, very present um, state. Yeah, definitely. They're fantastic. That's what you want to do is, well, brain taps a really good one. You could just do it on your own and listen to those binaural beats and get, get the brain tap. He's got a great app. It's like 28 bucks a month or something. Uh, you can get those brainwaves into those different states. If you're there, there are ways to help you get there. Uh, and, and that's a way to help you get there versus just doing breath work. Uh, I do human garages, fascial maneuvers with breath work. Uh, I love their system that helps me get into a, a more relaxed state. Uh, they talk about Gary Lanham's owner. He talks about the fascia being dehydrated from the barium and the chemtrails. So rehydrate your fascia with yeah, basically silica, which is diatomaceous earth or iris sea moss and get the minerals back in your body. So there's ways to self-heal, hydrate, uh, normalize that brainwave state. So you're in a, a you know, parasympathetic rest, digest, you know, brainwave state versus sympathetic fight, flight, flee, mode where uh, the stressors of these EMFs toxins uh, will put you in. Yeah. Do you do a lot of breath work? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Do you do? So I, I like breath work. I like it a lot actually. And my favorite, you know, people have many different methods that they do. My favorite uh, is two breaths in one breath out. So you breathe into your stomach then you breathe into your chest and then you exhale and you basically lay on the floor for like, however long the facilitator is going to leave you on the grill, just going. And, uh, I, it's hard to even put into words, but it's pretty amazing. You feel really, yeah, for sure. really, really refreshed afterwards and ready to go. Yeah, you are. Cause that's moving your chi. It's moving your energy. It's the, the life coming back into you and in such a big way. So yeah, I, I love doing that type of breathing when I'm like on a run, I'll do two in one out. Uh, but there's so many different ways to breathe, uh, and iron out the system. And so I, I've been leaning more into the human garage system because it's a free and it's self-healing. I check it out for all you guys out there and, and it's incredible. I and mean, he looks at the body as a pressured system and we can counter rotate the body and wring it out if you will. And you get stronger, you get more powerful. And then you add the breath, you clear emotional trauma and you basically self heal quicker than anything. Yeah. 
amazing. I love it. Um, I feel like, I mean, I'd love to have you back sometime to talk about more, like get into the details on like glyphosate, chemtrails, sleep. I actually heard the other day, I heard a, a, a stat. I have no idea if it's true, but the person that said it, I believe them a stat that the average American consumes about one credit card of plastic every week. Yeah. That's scary. Yeah. That's frightening. Yeah. We got to get back to really cleaning our air and our environment and what is it? Chemical free body. Uh, it was a non-toxic dad. I think I forget what his handle is on Instagram. Uh, he's got a great handle, get the pans to, you know, stainless steel, but not have nickel in them, get the plastics out of our world in a lot of ways and, uh, keep our methylation systems open there. There's, we're being inundated by in every industry, you know, since we were little, so it, we're, our bodies are so resilient, but if our bucket of fullness is you know, full, yeah, and then you add something into it, you're going to see people break down. And I think that's what we saw with all the shots that you know, people got sold into taking. Uh, it, people that had their bucket of fullness full got got uh, leveled. It's too bad. So, um, yeah, as we wrap up, where can people find you? Um, what do you want? What do you want the world to know before we wrap it up? Everybody get grounded by nature because that's your nature and it's free. So get outside, touch, touch a tree, hug a tree. If that's your thing, go have a picnic on the lawn, get into some bodies of water. I am in the ocean every day uh, for at least a half hour. Even when it's cold, I'm in there. So get grounded, get barefoot, walk your dog at night, like just get outside and be barefoot and and get into these uh, resonances of nature, the sounds, the smells, the sun, uh, the air, and and uh, just the actual resonance of the planet and and the elements in the planet, because it's free. And then when you're not outside, use our grounding bags. When you're inside, to get grounded, ground out your homes, and develop those usage and proximity protocols. And you could find all of our stuff on athleticism.com. That's where all of our curated health products are, athleticism.com. It's spelled athleticism.com for those that have trouble spelling. And then EMF Rocks, specifically for the EMF Rocks brands and uh, Faraday bags, the, the grounding bags to help you sleep. So on Instagram, athleticism, neuro stacking, or at EMF Rocks. And then on every Friday, I take over Human Garages, Instagram, and they have about a million followers on Instagram currently. And uh, Friday noon Pacific time, you can find me on Human Garage talking about EMFs and fascia and so much more. Amazing. I will see you there on Friday. I'm going to tune in and see what you got to say. And uh, Justin Franzen, thanks for coming on the podcast. Jeff, you're the man. Appreciate you. Thanks so much. Thanks. Bye, everyone.